the Senator Orengo, then I'll come to you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I was really rushing back on account of uh, the proceedings of the Committee of the Whole, which met, met, met this, uh, this morning. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, to show the significance of a Committee of the Whole, and where we borrowed this procedure for purposes of the meeting uh, this morning, it is important to know what happens when you have a committee of the whole. And those are found in part uh, 22 of the standing orders. Uh, and I invite speaker to, Mr. Speaker to look at it. Uh, but just for, to emphasize the point, uh, the committee, when the committee of the whole meets it, it may not adjourn until it considers fully the matter that is placed before it. And then standing order number 177, when all matters referred to a committee of the whole have been considered, the third person shall be directed by motion to report to the Senate. So this morning, what actually we were asking the chair and I know Mr. Clark may be referring to uh, the fact that the Committee of the Whole normally uh, applies when you're dealing with bills. Uh, but I'm saying that it is not for every reason that a Committee of the Whole House sits. And it is important that the Committee of the Whole House, and I want to correct the chairman here, because I saw in that report you were saying that he's the one who convened the committee of the whole. No, no. You, have, you don't have powers to, to convene a committee of the whole. There's no way, there's no way you can do that. You can't do it. The committee of the whole can only be convened on resolution of the house or by the direction of the speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to say, without doubt, before I come to the point, that if, it, if need be, we could even adjourn the House for 15, 20 yes. minutes so that a proper motion or report is put before the House for discussion. This is a matter, if we leave it today without talking about it fully, then Mr. Speaker will not be uh, fulfilling our mandate to the people. Even where I was in the last one hour, the question that people were asking me constantly is what are you doing about this uh, increase of fuel uh, and uh, the burden that it is uh, placing on the ordinary people? Mr. Speaker, it was said that taxation without representation is, 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 is equal to tyranny. But I want to say that when people are overtaxed, it's like slavery. It is enslavement, what we are doing to the people of this country. And I urge you, Mr. Speaker, that uh, depending on the position of the chair, or not depending on him, if it is possible to adjourn even for 20, 30 minutes, we bring a proper report with the resolutions. This is a matter we, we cannot discuss generally. We must discuss it with certain resolutions. And I think that's the direction we should go. And uh, if we leave it until tomorrow, I think all the uh, urgency would have been lost. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, take, I, I take issue with the, with the clerk who was sitting this morning, because I remember, and I want the clerk to hear this, we asked for his assistance to assist the committee of the whole come out with an appropriate report on two issues, with the resolutions on the question of non-compliance by the cabinet secretary, it's actually contempt of the house, constant, yeah. repeated contempt of the house. And secondly, our resolution of the question of the increase, unnecessary, in my view, of costs of fuel and the, the taxations that measures that, that have been taken. Uh, I, I, I submit that we should adjourn for a few minutes if, uh, if somebody can appropriately come up with a, a, move, a motion to adjourn. Senator Olekina.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise pass on to Standing Order 32, which states clearly that a Senate may, at any time for reasons stated, seek leave to move that the Senate do adjourn now to be able to discuss this matter in detail. 